Greetings from sunny Thailand. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know how much I love machinery. And today, I've come about an hour north of the city of Bangkok to the Royal Thai Aviation Museum. I'm so excited. Let's go check it out. The easiest way to get to the Royal Thai Air Force Museum is to take the light green BTS line all the way to the exit, which is marked Royal Thai Air Force Museum. Admission is free and the museum is open every day except Monday from 9 a.m. to 3.30 in the afternoon. You definitely need to come check this out if you like airplanes and military history. The bulk of the museum collection is inside, but let's start outside before the sun really kicks in and starts kicking my butt. Now guys, I am not an airplane specialist, I'm a generalist. But I'm going to show you some of these planes like this beautiful Lockheed RT-33A. Now, I can recognize a couple of them. That there is an F-86 Sabre and that there is also an F-86 Sabre. Two different iterations. But this place is packed with different airplanes. We'll walk around here, take a look, and then we can go inside. There's just so many different planes here. And this one in front of me, I think this is a DC-3. Let's go take a look. Might be something else, but I think we can actually go inside of it. No, I was wrong. This is a Douglas C-47 Dakota. There's stairs. Let's see if we can actually climb aboard this thing. I think that would be a no. Padlock up here. But such a nice view from up here. You can see all the planes out here in this parking lot. These two planes definitely look like Cessnas, just have that general shape. And typically when you see aircraft like this, this is going to be observation, reconnaissance aircraft that they would have flown to obviously observe and uh, find out what's going on out in the battlefield and scout. These are not equipped with any kind of anti-aircraft or ground machine guns or any weaponry. They are simply for observation. I just realized there's a ton of other airplanes around the corner, but I think I found my two favorites so far. This thing here, I have no idea what it is, JP-8, but I just love the Tiger motif on the front, the camouflage. And I believe this is a Trojan. This thing's just very stubby, very tall, kind of thick looking. This thing is just amazing. On this side, we've got some more colorful airplanes. They don't seem to be in Air Force colors or at least camouflage, but they're definitely Air Force planes. But this thing here, no idea what this is. It's a RFAB Fan Trainer FT600 Fan Trainer. This is a trainer. Wow, really bizarre, especially this engine placement. It's got a turbine prop engine in the middle of the body of the fuselage. I've never seen a layout like this in any airplane that I've come across before. And I'll definitely give you a little bit more history of this museum once we go inside and I can get some air conditioning. But basically it was opened in 1952. It was renovated several times and the Thai Royal Air Force just wanted to preserve and show off their heritage. And that's why the museum was of course built. And this museum has quite a few rare airplanes. There's a few airplanes here that we're gonna see, but there's only one or two left of in the whole world. So I'm really excited to see those. I think they're probably going to be inside. I love the quirky and the strange and this thing is really wild. It's got a split fuselage with a, like a canard tail in the back. And it is a prop driven plane, but it's a push and not a pull prop plane. And this is also an RFB Fan Trainer FT400. Again, never seen a plane like this, especially with the propeller in the back pushing it and the split fuselage out back. Guys, I'm blown away. I only expected to see about 10 airplanes here, but look at what they got. This place is jam packed. This has to be the strangest plane I have ever seen. Just look at the shape of the fuselage. It's like a drum with two cones on the end. Again, I'm not an aviation expert, but I have never seen an airplane shaped like this. The proportions are just so interesting. To me, it's absolutely magnificent. I'm really enjoying my time here. All of these airplanes are locked up and apparently they only open them when they have special events here. But I think I found someone that can take us for a ride in this plane. Hello there, Captain Meowskers. Can you, uh, can you show us around, sir? I, I, I think he's taking a break. Okay, let's continue on.
there's another huge hangar over here. And right here, I think this is a Bell or a Huey helicopter. I'm not sure, but this is definitely reminiscent of what have been used during the Vietnam uh, War era in the uh, mid to late 70s. And we've got a bunch more airplanes. But what's interesting is if you look at the covering the shades for the airplanes, they are shaped like wings. I think that's a great architectural touch. I almost missed this giant warehouse, which looks like it's full of helicopters. Let's go inside, take a look. Helicopters are just such interesting machines. Again, another Vietnam era Huey or Bell. Not really sure what this is. Next to it, these big tall dudes. I'm pretty sure these are Sikorskis. They just kind of have that shape. And let's see if I'm right. First of all, yep, this is a Bell UH-1 right here. A very common helicopter. And this one here, um, it says child in care. So. I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean there's a child inside of this giant helicopter? We can go inside of them, so we will take a look. And yes, this is a Sikorsky S58T and cavernous. I mean, look at these things, just such magnificent giants. Um, obviously, this one's got a hoist they would have used uh, for rescues or lowering people down. And the nostrils on this I love the look of this. This is such a unique helicopter. Let's uh, take a quick look inside of this one here. As you can see, it's got a couple of bench seats in here. Quite tall, uh, lots of room in here for me, and the helicopter pilot sits up top. Very interesting position. So yeah, you would basically climb up here and then I guess fold the seat down and sit up in this canopy. Uh, yeah, it's hot, but uh, this is cool. I've never got to climb on one of these. I'm so happy I got to come over here. If you've ever watched the old TV show MASH, then I think you will definitely recognize this helicopter. This is what they used in that series, and this is typical of the helicopters used during the Korean War. This was a helicopter that was used to transport patients to hospitals or for surveillance, and very small, very agile, and has a very distinct, unique shape with this bulbous canopy at the front end. I find Sikorsky helicopters a little easy to spot. They all had some very unique designs, much like this here. So these are two Sikorskys, and yeah, um, I'm guessing probably in late 40s, early 50s, very unique. However, this thing here, what is going on here? It has intermeshing blades, which means they cross over each other. Look at the size of this exhaust. This thing is gigantic and has a huge loading door in the back, probably for loading either medical patients or just other things that you would carry. But this is definitely a transport helicopter. Very strange. I um, believe this is a common Husky um, HH-43. Uh, that's what I believe this is, at least some kind of a common Husky for sure. This transport plane is open. Let's go inside, take a look. Oh, this is very cool probably load up a car in here, lots of personnel. This little building that I just walked into has a bunch of the flight simulators here. You can actually sit down, you can try some of the flight simulators. There's many different kinds. There's all sorts of other military displays here. And this building is kind of hidden. Some of these are just alongside, so you don't really see them. So just make sure you look around as you're coming through this museum. This area back here has a bunch of the different ejection seats throughout the years. It even has a hypobaric chamber here where they can simulate different pressure altitudes. And there's, there's so much stuff in this museum, guys. I mean, it's really worth checking out. There's just way too many airplanes to show you here. Like I said, I literally thought there was gonna be like a dozen or so airplanes, but there has to be at least 30 different airplanes so far and I think there's more inside. Let's walk through here, take a look at some of this stuff, and then I wanna go inside and see what's going on in there. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with this plane here. It's very bizarre, but I believe this here is a Texan. I think it's a T6, a World War II plane. Very, very popular, very famous, but I actually spot something here that I know all too well. This is a MiG-21. This is a Soviet-built plane back from probably uh, 1960s. And this is uh, one of the first jet planes from Russia. I mean, it's one of the further itinerations, but the MiG was a dominant, dominant jet fighter.
I love how they have these cutaway models here so you can actually see what's inside the plane, see the structure of it. These are very unique. Uh, cutaway models are a great way to show people how things are built and what's inside. These models are cool, but this right here, this is a Harrier jet. This is known as a VTOL, which is vertical takeoff and landing. And this plane possesses the ability to take off and land almost like a helicopter straight up and down. And the way this airplane is able to, to take off and land vertically is because it has these pivoting engines. As you can see here, this whole part will pivot down so it can take off and land vertically and then will rotate back so the plane can go forward. It's quite an ingenious design. It has four of them, two on each side. And just like I always say at car shows, go to the back parking lot, same thing goes for a museum. That's sometimes where you'll find some of the really interesting stuff that they're hiding back here. We've got some kind of a rescue seaplane here. Really bizarre. It actually looks like a scaled down version of a large plane, but man, that thing's got some really cool engines. Love the paint scheme. And over there, the blue plane, I believe this is a Curtis. This is a World War II airplane. Again, don't quote me on this, but I think this is a Curtis American built World War II warplane. Another cargo plane. Oh yeah, this, uh, this is definitely what I would need for my uh, late night Taco Bell runs. We can definitely fit all the food we need in here. All right, I'm excited to go inside and see what's going on in here. Now let's take a walk through here and I'll tell you a little bit of the history of this museum and a little bit about the involvement of Thailand during the Second World War. The museum was established in 1952 to collect, preserve, and restore different airplanes and other aviation equipment used by the Royal Thai Air Force. Now, in addition to one F-11C and other rare aircraft, this museum collection also includes one of only two surviving Japanese Tachikawa Ki-36 trainers, the last surviving Vought OTU Corsair, one of the three surviving Curtis BF-2C Goshawks, a Spitfire, and several Newports and Bruges. The museum provides details of Thailand's role in World War II. Imperial Japanese forces landed at various points in Thailand on December 8, 1941, and after resisting for one day, the Thai forces were ordered to cease fire and allow Japanese forces to pass through the kingdom. The Thai government of Field Marshal Pibun Songkram would also declare war on both Britain and the United States in January 1942. Thailand remained technically a Japanese ally until Japanese surrender in August 1945, despite the existence of large anti-Japanese underground here in Thailand. This museum contains several paintings of TIE fighter aircraft intercepting US B-29s, P-38s, and even P-15s. This room houses some of the F-5Bs, F-5As, F-16s that uh, the Thai Air Force acquired from the U.S. And these are obviously static displays, but my goodness, uh, are they such a powerhouse to look at? Like this, I believe it's an F-16. This thing is gigantic. So cool to be able to see it here. Um, we've got a couple more F-5Bs over here, or F-5As, again, not an expert, but these are very interesting airplanes. and. The cool thing is here, you can actually walk up and take a look into the cockpit. So let's do just that. I've never been this close to an actual fighter jet that's somewhat uh, current. I mean, these were actually built quite a while ago. I believe that uh, these planes are sometime from the 70s, maybe even late 60s. I almost forgot, what's going on with this lowrider airplane over here? No idea what that thing is. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Thai Air Force Museum. Please make sure you take care of yourselves. Check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you all very soon in another episode.